Today, we are reinvigorating the double down sandwich from KFC. Fried chicken, special sauce, bacon, cheese, and more fried chicken. The four keys to reinvigorate this double down in the home kitchen are, number one, brining the chicken for moistness. Number two is utilizing the spice mix in the brine and the breading. Number three is getting a freshly crisp and golden brown crust. And number four is adding a special sauce with a kick. I know a lot of people tend to avoid deep frying at home because of splattering hot oil. So before we actually dive right into the recipe, I'm gonna give you six tips to make deep frying at home as easy as possible. Number one is deep frying in a wok. This is a tip I picked up from the food lab that just makes sense. The wide open pan of a wok is perfect for catching more of those errant splatters of oil that seem to end up all around the kitchen when we're deep frying. Number two is use a thermometer. This goes for the oil temperature and the chicken. Be precise when frying. We're going to drop the chicken in at around 375 degrees Fahrenheit, where we'll drop the oil down to around 350. For the chicken, we want it to read at least 160 once it's out of the oil. No under or overcooked chicken around here. Number three is don't crowd the pan. Fried foods need social distancing too. If you throw all the chicken in at once, it will lower the temperature of the oil too fast, removing our crispiness, and additionally, the oil could overflow and splatter everywhere. None of those are good things. Let the chicken have space so the oil can go to work, evaporating off the water and crisping up to give us a golden brown and crunchy crust. Number four is drain with paper towels and a wire rack. When the chicken first comes out of the fryer, we dab both sides on a paper towel, which actually absorbs more oil than just letting it drip off. Once it's dabbed, then we can move it to the wire rack so the air can circulate, keeping our chicken crispy instead of soggy like KFCs by the time it gets to your mouth. Number five is season the chicken. Why does fried food taste better at the restaurant than at home? Most of the time, it's literally as simple as adding a sprinkle of salt to the chicken right after it comes out of the fryer. The difference is night and day. Lastly, reuse your fry oil. It can be annoying to use a whole bottle of oil, so don't just throw it away. This stuff can be used at least three or four more times for frying. Line a mesh sieve with some cheesecloth or a paper towel to strain out any debris, and then just funnel that into a large mason jar and store it in a dark place for next time. Waste not, want not. All right, ladies and gents, with all that being said, let's make our homemade double down sandwich. First up is the spice mix, which as discussed earlier, will be used in the brine and the breading. Add two spoons of smoked paprika, one spoon of black pepper, one spoon of oregano, one spoon of chili powder, a half spoon of garlic powder, half spoon of cayenne powder, and a half spoon of powdered ginger to a bowl, and just mix that all up. And now we can talk about the brine. Any self-righteous fried chicken is going to start with a brine. I don't care if it's buttermilk, pickle juice, or just the classic water and salt. A brine enhances the flavor, texture, and moistness of the chicken. Today, we are making a 5% brine, and I'll show you how to do it without waiting for the water to cool down. Add 500 grams of water, 50 grams of salt, two bay leaves, and two spoonfuls of the spice mix to a saucepan. Now turn the heat to medium high and bring that to a boil. We're bringing it to a boil so that the salt will dissolve. Now, normally you have to sit and wait around for this brine to cool, but to make it faster, we're gonna use ice. So I added 500 grams of ice to a large container where we will be brining the chicken, and I poured this spice brine over top. It melts the ice, and now we have our 5% brine, cooled and ready to go. For the chicken, I'm using boneless, skinless chicken thighs, but chicken breasts or fillets would work too. Add the thighs to the brine, and now we're going to let these sit in the brine for at least 60 minutes or up to 12 hours. For a thin cut like this, they actually don't need much time for that salt to go to work. However, if you were doing something like a whole chicken, you could let this go for over 24 hours. While that's in the fridge brining, let's make our sauce. So anytime you hear the term special sauce, it almost always means a mayo-based sauce with a bunch of other condiments and spices. So here's what I did for mine. I added roughly four parts of mayo, one part Dijon mustard, one part sriracha, and one part horseradish, along with some freshly ground black pepper, a little pinch of salt, and a couple dashes of smoked paprika. And I almost forgot one part of honey. You're just gonna stir this up and give this a taste and adjust as you see fit. This could be made countless ways depending on what you have in the fridge. Mayo is just the main component and then you can really branch out from there. Let's heat our oil and then get back to our chicken. 
At the stove, set a large wok on the burner. Add oil about one third the way up the pan, and I'm using peanut oil, which Kenji Lopez tells me is ideal for its moderately high level of saturated fats for crispy chicken and clean flavor. However, I'm also adding some chicken smulch, which I rendered from the skin of the chicken thighs this morning. While that's heating around, let's bread our chicken. On a baking sheet, add 100 grams of flour, 25 grams of cornstarch, 5 grams of baking powder, 5 grams of salt, and 2 spoonfuls of our spice mix. Mix it until it is well combined, and now take one piece out of the chicken and let it drip off before tossing it in the breading. We want that breading to get in all the nooks and crannies, which is going to give us those crispy, craggly edges once it's fried. Completely coat one piece of chicken at a time, then shake it to remove the excess, and you can complete the same process for the remaining pieces of chicken. Once those are all done, we're going to pop a wire rack on top, and we'll head to the stove. Another tip I should have mentioned for frying is setting up your workstation. What I'll be doing here is working from left to right. Let's do this. First, verify the oil temperature is 375 degrees. Now grab a piece of chicken and gently lay it into the oil away from you. Keeping space in mind, I'm only going to add two pieces at a time. You're going to fry the pieces of chicken for 8 to 10 minutes, agitating them slightly until they are nice and golden brown. Then you can move the chicken to the paper towels and check the temperature. If it's above 165, we are good to go. Now just dab both sides of the chicken with the paper towel to remove any excess oil and give that a nice sprinkle of salt over top, remembering tip number five. Then you can move them down to the wire rack to let the air circulate so it stays crispy while we are doing the other pieces. Repeat that exact same process with the remaining pieces of chicken and there we have perfectly crispy and juicy fried chicken. Let's assemble that sandwich. This is the easy part. One piece of chicken down, slather on our special sauce, and top that with some crispy bacon. This is that Szechuan bacon from my video. You guys can check that in the description. Finally, add your cheese. I use some smoked Gruyere, and lastly, our other piece of chicken on top. But don't just put it on top. Make sure you put more special sauce, and there we go. Let's cut into this thing and look at that cross section. It's really a beautiful monstrosity of a sandwich. My brother and I sat down to give you our first impressions and the taste test. All right, everyone, first taste test time. And if you know the rules, if you follow my TikTok, sandwiches are always cut on a diagonal. Oh, God. I don't know if you guys can see. Oh. I don't know if you guys can see how juicy that is. That's all from that brine in there. Mm. It tastes just as good as fast food. I mean, better. Yeah. The thing, I was talking about this earlier, that the similar taste is KFC, but way better texture, a little more crunch, juicier. A little bit elevated, it's great. Wow. Easily the best fried chicken I've ever made. Mm. Gonna Very throw good. that hands down. I just woke up, two pieces of fried chicken is just what I needed. It's crunchy, it's juicy, you get all the spices that were in the brine and in the breading, like, that is, that is something everyone should try to make. And like oh, I said, yeah. if you follow those deep frying tips from earlier like it's really not that hard of a process um just keep keep your temperature of the oil right don't overcrowd the pan you know drop it in gently you're not going to get any oil splatters if you do it in the wok like over on the stove right now like there's a couple little drops here and there but nothing normally like it would for maybe if you do a cast iron pan um the wok is by far the best frying vessel for the home cook at least Maybe one of the best things I've ever had, to be honest. Really? Dude, it's so good. I know. Oh my god. It's low carb, too. Best of both worlds. Stay on your diet. Yeah, if there's any, if there's any keto people out there, <laughs> yeah. this is this is the sandwich this is, this for you. Is, yeah. High fat. Yeah, and that sauce, it kicks a punch, right? Yeah. With the, uh, it's got mustard, horseradish, all those good stuff in there. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I would highly recommend if you have the stuff to make, even if you just make the fried chicken alone, 
and make a sandwich out of that, yeah. you're going to be in for an absolute treat. That'll wrap it up for this video. We'll catch you all in the next one. Peace. Do those spices in there too? I know. A little bit oh. of heat. Perfect.